Americans are in a bad mood about the economy. Republicans, Democrats, independents, they are telling pollsters that they feel miserable. Now, I can give you all the reasons why the economy is in very good shape. Employers are still hiring, wages are outpacing inflation. Even today, news that inflation was up just over 3% compared to a year ago. Really good news. But here's the problem. Americans are mad. They're mad because so many things cost more than they did before the pandemic. Groceries are up 25%. Rent is up 21%. Auto insurance, up 35%. And for many, it's not about inflation slowing back to its old pace before the pandemic. They want prices to fall back, too. But here's the thing. I'd like to see prices lower, but when you dig into it, that might not actually be a good thing. We're going to explain why. And luckily, I got the perfect guy to do it. My good friend Justin Wolfers is here, professor of economics and public policy at the University of Michigan. Justin, we have a good economy, right? Almost every leading economist a year ago thought we would be deep in a recession today, and we're not. Inflation has slowed. But the sticking point for so many of us in our everyday lives that's creating this negative sentiment is that stuff's really expensive, right? Before the pandemic, a gallon of milk was $3.20 on average. Today, it's 4 bucks. When people go to restaurants, they're saying, Jesus, when are these prices going to go back down? I need you to explain to us why it is a good thing for prices not to go back to pre-pandemic, because I'd, I'd like them to be lower. <laughs> We'd all like that, wouldn't we? And, you know, Stephanie, don't stop and say, let's get prices back to 2019 levels. You know what's even better? Let's get prices back to 1919 levels. Uh, a Coke was a nickel. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Look, the reason that thought experiment doesn't work is we could go back, we could have prices at 1919 levels, all prices, including wages. And that's the thing. What, has, what happens in the economy on average is as prices rise, so do wages. Like one comes with the other. And what we've seen in this economy is, yes, prices have risen a lot, but so have wages. Now, I want to get to the core of your question. There is a way back to 2019 prices. In fact, there's a way back to 1919 prices. We could smash the economy. We could stop all demand. We could create a massive recession so that no one anywhere could sell anything at their current prices. So then they'd have to cut prices. And that's how we get prices to go back, by destroying demand, by raising unemployment to 10, 11, 12, 15, 20%. But I'll tell you the truth. None of us want that because the pain of inflation is temporary. It's prices getting ahead of wages. The pain of unemployment is a whole lot greater. All right, but let's talk about this. The economy is different for different people, right? If you own a home, yes. if you have a fixed rate mortgage, if you've got a steady right. job, a 401k, things are okay for you, right? Health insurance, higher prices, they're maddening, but you feel pretty good financially. If you're on the other end, if you are trying to save for buying a home, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, higher prices are killing you. So how do you solve things for people in that second camp? Just saying to them, man, it's not a recession. You should feel good. That doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Look, you make a really important point, which is I was just describing averages, and, and each of us is different, a, a beautiful flower. Um, one of the things that's really important about this this current expansion is the first expansion in my lifetime in which people in the lower half of the income distribution are getting larger wage rises. So in fact, this is the first time in decades pay rises are going to those who need them the most. Do you know where they're not going? They're not going to the highly educated upper middle class amongst which journalists are dramatically overrepresented. Um, so for a large, you know, a large number of people, the reality is that they're doing better. They're actually doing better than just keeping up. They're getting ahead. For you, Stephanie, I bet you're kind of finding it hard to get someone to clean your house. It might be a little more expensive than it once was. I'm not saying you don't do it yourself. But yes, when a price changes, two things happen. The buyer feels worse, but the seller feels happier. And that's what we're seeing right now with low wage labor. You point to a whole bunch of other places where this same dynamic plays out. You're absolutely right. When, price, when house prices rise, it's terrible for new people trying to get into the market. It's wonderful for the people who own houses. But here's a funny thing. 
imagine right now the headlines were house prices plummeting. What do you think the national financial press would be saying? They'd be talking about how that's terrible news. And it is. That would be terrible news for the homeowners, good news for those trying to get into the market. Yeah, I mean, in that same vein, uh, years ago when rates were at zero, it was also impossible to buy a house because they were getting bid up right, left and center. Um, something that we hear often when we talk about the economy and those happy sellers are corporate America. When you think about high prices, how much stock do you put around corporate greed? How much corporates are making right now? Because it's an easy headline to say corporates are gouging us, but it's not necessarily accurate across the board. And whether you like it or not, it's legal. Right. So I think there's two answers. If I were advising a political candidate right now and I wanted to find a way of making political hay out of the present moment, I would beat up on corporations because everyone hates them. And in a very direct sense, corporations raise prices. But saying that, corpora that corporate greed is causing inflation or causing high prices is a bit like saying gravity causes plane crashes. It's literally true. But gravity is kind of like one of those eternal constants, and we try and design planes that fly despite it. Corporate greed is one of those eternal constants, and we try and design economies despite it. Now, Part of good design is making sure we don't have too many monopolies. Part of good design is making sure the corporations can't add a whole bunch of junk fees and opaque pricing and rip you off at the last moment. So we need all that stuff. Um, but I think that blaming greed in itself misses the fact that there were real disruptions in our economy. Remember, there was this thing kind of a, a global pandemic. It made it harder to do everything, including doing business. A lot of those higher costs turned into higher prices.